greetings um out here as usual bring this message of emancipation to you and i'm in my backyard trying to get this message across to you because right now it's very 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 windy out in nature actually i went out in nature earlier and there was so much wind and the equipment i'm using normally absorb a lot of the the wind okay so i didn't want to bring this message with too much distraction as you can even hear in the background the the wind that is blowing and is blowing very very high but where i'm sitting here you can hear my voice very much clearly and do not be distracted by the background noise of the wind just enjoy nature it is nature speaking okay so let me say this before i go any further if background noise can get you to be easily removed from your focus how could you manifest anything when you go into meditation you have to be very 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 focused and be very very vivid in your imagination if you want to be able to create your reality consciously you know as the wind blows even louder i'm gonna lift my voice a little bit more louder so you can hear me clearly because the main thing is you getting the message so let me go on to speak about what i really want to speak to you about i just want to speak to you concerning the book of daniel where i speak about Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego. And I want to show you how it dovetail with what I was speaking to you in an earlier video about the, the beast in Revelation 13. So in the New Testament, uh, there's Revelation. In the Old Testament, there's Daniel. And Daniel and Revelation both dovetail because they're bringing the same things to you. Okay, now... As you know, I always teach that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. For the Bible is not literal, neither is it secular history, and it was written symbolically. Therefore, it has no reference to anyone that existed thousands of years ago and to, or to any actual event that took place on earth thousands of years ago. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, it's all a great psychological drama. It's all about the human psyche. It's all about thoughts. Okay, it's all about your imagination, which is the creator in everyone. So the entire theme of the Bible is God. Okay, are your God self, your creative self, your, your, your magical self. Okay, it's all about you. It is your spiritual autobiography. Okay, so let me go on now to the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because later on, when I put certain things in place, I'll be able to sit down and break down these scriptures with you. I'll be doing Bible studies with you and break down all of these things in the Bible and make it more clearly for you that you would understand your spiritual autobiography, okay? So I'm just going to put it in a nutshell for you at this moment. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is speaking... Now, first of all, Shadrach is your peace of mind. So you have to have a peace of mind. So it is a quality that is in you, not a person who existed thousands of years ago. It's a power that is in you that is called Shadrach. Okay, and it's a peace of mind. Meshach is love. It's a quality in you. It's power. It's God actually in you. You have to love yourself. You have to embrace yourself. You have to believe in yourself. And also, Obednego is speaking of a wisdom or light. Okay? He's seeing things from a certain angle, having a certain understanding, having certain knowledge, coming into the wisdom of the ancient. That's what he's speaking about. It's all about wisdom. So it's about a peace of mind. It's about love. And it's all about wisdom. Okay? So it's showing you that when you're in position of these trees, three qualities that you would be able to overcome. And what would you be able to overcome? 
Now let us look at Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar is King Ego, your ego self, the outer self of you that wants to govern, that wants to rule and implement its way, its intellectual way, which is the way of the academic educational system by which we are we've been taught and also the political system that they've been infiltrating our minds with also and the religious system so all of that culminates king nebuchadnezzar that want to rule over you so it's a carnal mind that wants to rule over the mind of god or the the christ mind so there's a carnal mind and the christ mind Okay, King Nebuchadnezzar, and then you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which is three in one. Okay, it's everything is dwelling in that one person. Three is dealing with perfection also in numerology. Okay, now, and that is why, let me just say, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is speaking about thoughts, action, manifestation. And that is why, if you want to create anything in this world, you have to understand how thoughts work, how your action work, and how you will come into the manifestation or the creation. So here we see that Nebuchadnezzar, okay, which is basically, as I explained to you, your negative self, your lower self, the carnal mind, okay? And we see the system that is driving you into that realm of existence where you live in your lower self, okay? So as I've mentioned before, and I, I have to really reiterate these things that you can really, really get them. Okay, so when we go to school as little children, in all of, of our inner sense, where we do not know better, they infiltrate our mind with this whole educational system, right, to make us think a certain kind of way and to give us an employee mentality and for us to believe that education is the key. And so we put education over our own human imagination. So that is where, whereby, you know, we have kings ruling over us in terms of governments, okay? And we have even employers ruling over us. And I'm not saying there shouldn't be employers and employee. But if you know what to do to be the employer, you would rather choose to be the employer than the employee. Because you'll always have employers and employee. You'll always have slave and you'll always have masters. Because the body is a slave and the mind is, a mas is, is the master. Okay, the mind controls the body. So it is all, it all boils down to choice. That is why I'm bringing this message to you, to give you the freedom of choice. So as I was saying before now, so King Nebuchadnezzar put in place an idol, okay, uh, an image. And he was bringing this image before the entire world. Now what is that image that I'm speaking about right now? It is the coronavirus. That is the image that have been put in place by the system to control the people, to have them to make obeisance, to bow down to the image. Now, let me just break it down a little bit more for you. Now, after using the educational system for many years, using the church system for many years, and using the political system for many years, and when I speak about the, the system, the, 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 news, the news media and all of these things come right into play, okay? The government in your country, all, all of these people come into play, right? But the real, real people who is behind this whole thing is what they refer to as the elites, okay? And so these other governments all around the world, they're shadow governments, they're just puppets, they're just tools. And the bill a certain way of thinking in our mind because they infiltrate our subconscious mind. So the idol is actually built within the minds of people. So when it tells you that King Nebuchadnezzar set up an idol, uh, an image and wanted all the world to bow to that image is a way of thinking. It's a belief system. And so we see the news been feeding the people all around the world with this uh, energy affair concerning the, the, the coronavirus and they blew everything out of proportion 
to bring the people under fair. So if someone die from cancer, they're going to call it corona. If, if, if someone die from diabetes, they're going to call it corona. I remember in my country, there's so much people used to be dying from, from, from um, diabetes. No, you do not hear anybody speak about diabetes. Everybody's speaking about corona because why? They are vibrating on that frequency. So here I show you now the whole world was vibrating on this kind of negative frequency. The whole world was vibrating on this negative way of thinking, which was a way of fear, because it's, it's stated here that Nebuchadnezzar, right, says that anyone who doesn't give up be, be sense or bow down to this image, to this idol, that they would suffer punishment. And all of this was happening where? In Babylon. Where is Babylon? The place of your mind where you dwell psychologically. It can either be Jerusalem or it can be Babylon. Jerusalem is the city of joy and peace and happiness. When you are in your right mind, okay, and you know who you are, you're dwelling in Jerusalem. When you are in Jerusalem, you are under the influence of Shenrat, Meshach, and Abednego, which is basically self-love peace of mind and wisdom okay so here now is showing you now that all those who succumb to the captivity in babylon that they were falling victim to confirmation they were being conformed but here we see those who have been transformed by the renewing of their mind that they weren't bowing to the system and that's what it's all about. And that's why I'm, I'm telling you it's very important to cultivate love for yourself. Believe in yourself. Look to yourself. Do not look to a God in the sky. Do not look to any power outside of yourself. Look within to discover that your true identity is your divinity. And realize that it is your thought that is creating your reality. And you can create your reality consciously. Therefore, you can be whatever you want to be. You can have whatever you want to have. You just have to learn how to go to bed consciously. Awake consciously and live throughout the day consciously of your thoughts. Because it is your thought that is creating your reality. So yes, as I was saying, my brothers and my sisters. It is said that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow to this idol, did not bow to this image. He's speaking about those of us who are so aware, those of us who are enlightened, those of us who can think for ourselves and we have a peace of mind. Doesn't matter what the storm may be. We do not see it as a storm. We see, we see that we have a power that can calm the storm because we realize that we are the captain of our ship and we have been awakened by our disciples, which is our thoughts. Awake us. And we say, peace, be still. We are in a place of peace. So here, yes, Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego, as I would have stated before, these are the qualities that you must have that would refuse to bow to the system and what the system wanted to depend so much on money that you forget that your real money your real currency is your thoughts it's your mentality so real money is within you for money was for us a thought it was for us imagining everything that we depend upon on this earth for survival it was for us a thought it was for us imagine and the secret of the ages the secret of the ancients have always been that we become what we think about. So whatever you give your mind to, that is what you would become. So those who give their mind to an idol will bow before an idol. Which means those who give their mind to mammon. Mammon is speaking of money or the material things that you allow to mostly control you. For example, when they want to have you covering up your face. Because you're doing a certain job, you have to be strong enough, you understand, to be able to know that you have the power to create for yourself. And you can walk off of that job. All the job I lose, I walk off of them. And at that time, I wasn't this conscious. I follow my heart. I follow my intuition. I, I knew within myself that I would not starve. 
I knew within myself that I wasn't placed here to live a life on the street as a beggar. I knew deep within me that someday I have to find the pawn of great price. I have to find true riches. And the reason why I ever find myself in secular Christianity is because I was searching for myself. I'm a little boy asking myself, who am I and who is God? And so I set out on a journey to discover myself. And that's how I went into Christianity. And for 25 years, I searched. I searched for the phenomena of life. I searched for the answer of who I am. And when I found out the truth, I realized that when I found myself, I found God. And when I found God, I found myself. And that would have given me freedom. And that is why whom the son set free is free indeed. And when I say son, I'm not speaking about the S-O-N of 2,000 years ago. I'm speaking about when you discover that you are the son. You are the only begotten son. When you realize that you are the the the, 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 the resurrection and the life. When you realize that you are the Lord and master of your destiny. When you realize that you are the creator who's creating your reality. And you understand the man is not the victim of circumstances or the creatures of circumstances. But circumstances are the creatures of man. So my brother and my sisters, this whole idol been put before the whole world. And so they put the people in a place of compromise. Because many people are thinking about if I do if I do not obey the laws and my workplace, I might lose my job. Many people are contemplating. Um, unemployment. Many people are just waiting on the government handouts. They call it stimulus and all of these things. And so many who really bow to the idol that have been set up to keep them brainwashed, to keep them controlled, they are giving obeisance. They are bowing down. But here is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who are not afraid to face the fiery furnace. The fiery furnace are the childs that you would face when you refuse to bow to the system. When you, be, when you refuse to believe in what they want you to believe, you will be tried. Your faith will be tested. But you have been told in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 to examine yourself. See if you have any faith or not. Don't you know your own self? Don't you know your own self? That Christ is in you? That Christ is the creative power in you? Don't you know that there's only one power? There's only one creative power? And it's the power of imagining? Do you realize those in Buckingham Palace doesn't have a different power than you? Don't you realize that the President of America doesn't have a different power than you? Do you realize that the President of America have to go in the toilet to take a shit? Do you realize that the Queen in England have to go to the toilet to take a shit? Do you realize that the Pope in the Vatican have to go to the toilet to take a shit? Do you realize that the Rockefellers, okay, and, 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 and so on, and these families that they refer to as the elites and the rat childs and so on. All of these people, they have to go to the toilet and they have to take a shit. All of these people, they have to go in the shower and bathe. If they don't bathe, they're going to stink. Why? We are all one. One universal consciousness. The same power that put them to <coughs> sleep. And the same power putting you to sleep. So why do you give obeisance? Why do you look up to, to, to some people and look down on some people? That's why I don't, I don't look up to no one and I do not look down to no one. I treat everyone the same. And I will speak of everyone as the same because we are one universal consciousness. There's only one mind. There's only one infinite mind. There's only one God. There's only one creator. And that God and creator is in all of us. And that is the power that they don't want you to know. That is why they set up an idol. They set up an image. To keep you in your lower self. So the whole thing is. They are not the enemy. Your enemy is yourself. Because you have a choice. You can believe what the system is telling you. Through the news. Or you can believe in yourself. And there have always been prophets. 
men who are proceeding in their awakening. But they're not more than you. They're not holy men. I'm not a holy, righteous man, and you is a sinner man. No. Holiness, righteousness is a discovery. If you haven't come to the discovery, you understand? At a certain time, it doesn't mean that you are any less. Because there must be the false fruit of those that awake from the dream and from the sleep. And you're told also that unless a kind of weed falls in the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So if you want to bring forth fruit, you have to die to self. You have to die to the ego self. You have to die to the system and the idol that they're giving you to bow down to. You have to realize you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with you. And when they put you through the fiery furnace, a child, where you'll be wondering how you're going to make ends meet, how you're going to um, feed your children, what's going to happen to you, and you're thinking about all of these things that they want you to think about to keep you in, in, in a negative vibration. When you think about all of that, you will not be able to see the fourth man. You will not be able to recognize there's a fourth man, which is your higher state of consciousness, your I amness. It is only when you've been put in the fire because you refuse the system. You refuse to bow down to the idol. It is only when you've been put in the fire that you will prove your higher self. That you will prove that you are the creator. That you will prove that you, prove that you do not need to bow down and depend on anyone who try to accumulate all the wealth in the world with materialistically I'm speaking right and try to make you think that it, that is real wealth but the real wealth is within the pearl of great price is within you my brothers and my sisters your, 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 your feel of diamond is within you you have to discover it but you have to be brave you have to be strong I didn't give a shit and any jam that was on whereby I see people want to control me or people want to rule me. I, I never stand for that kind of bullshit. That's why all of my jobs I want, walk off of those. I wrote a book called Book of Resort and The Messenger. And in that book, I, I talk about me being a, a fitness trainer at a resort. And the way how I see people were being treated just for a dollar. And the, way, the, 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 the kind of mentality that the, these people have. I'm talking about my own people. You understand? And they were, they were cheated by these other people. And to cut a long story short, the, the investor took all the money with all pay so much of the people and go and go and, and, and went to what bank and it's the is it in Ghana free man, a man named David Ames. And um in twenty thirteen I walked off of that job. And I think it happened in twenty fifteen. And all these people's holding on and fighting and, and afraid to talk. For, for 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 what is right and what is true and what is honest they all lose more than the game because why they were so afraid to lose their job because when I speak to them they used to tell me remember I have bills to pay I have to pay the electric the electric bill I have to pay water bill I have much how much children all of these things I have land tax and everything to pay they was looking at all of these things and it was bowing and I walk off of the job and, and it enabled me to even put that book together called Book of Member Resort and the Messenger. One of these, I'm going to actually do a vlog to show you the, 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 the place that was left there. It, it's, it's left just like that. Nothing happening there. And it was the biggest resort they have on, had on the island. I'm going to do a vlog. I'm going to actually go down there and do a vlog. And I would have used my imagination to walk there. And I was doing it unconscious, and I used to tell tell um, people that I'm gonna walk at that resort as 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 a trainer Bef while the resort was building, and when the resort was open, I didn't even know the, uh, that resort would have opened about say, six or seven months, and I didn't even know anything until someone told me their husband was working there. That's when I was convinced I did open because I never used to like listen to the news and so on. And then I put my application and everything together. And it took me maybe a year and a half because they wasn't employing any 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 melanated people to be like the trainer. There was always some white person that was bringing from, from overseas because they do not believe people was qualified here. Because most people here don't want to do yoga. Most people here believe that yoga is something evil, you know. 
you, you realize the mindset of people, religious people. You want to tell certain people about yoga. I remember in the early, early days when I started to tell people about yoga and to do yoga. They tell me that's, that's a white people thing. And then, when people start to come around to do yoga, all the people who was actually doing yoga was basically a white person, was the teacher. Nobody would want to listen to me. <laughs> you see? So, um, because I, I couldn't do yoga, when the time came, and I went down there, you know what they did? They tell me they will have a yoga session with me before they employ me. I do not believe they did. As a matter of fact, they didn't do that with the others. Okay, because in my book, you see, I show you where they had this guy, this other trainer who wasn't even qualified, wasn't even a trainer. And it was time for us to do yoga. That's when he exposed. Okay, I mean, I digress a little bit. So let me get back to what I was saying. So the whole thing I was saying to you, my brother, my sister, you have to vibrate out of the fair energy. The energy of fear. So it is teaching you. Even put this whole thing in a nutshell. Okay. The system has set up an idol, an image, a, a belief system to keep you under fear, to keep you under doubt, for you to believe in a power outside of yourself, for you to have a certain idol within your mind, a certain image in your mind. So how you see yourself. Okay. So it all have to do with how you see yourself. That's the main thing. I want to I want to I want to teach how you see yourself. I've written a book called um um uh your mood is your fortune. Your mood is your fortune. And you have to do with how you see yourself, the perception that you hold about yourself. I've seen people come in and tell me that they have to they have to put on thing over their face because of their job. My brother, my sister, I don't want to tell people exactly what to do, but it was me. I tell them, fuck you and fuck your job. And I walk off the job. Okay, because I am not going to make anyone control me by fear. Because it means that you are actually putting money above yourself. Some people might try to reason and say, well, yeah, I have children, I have that. You're telling me, you come in this world to have this experience to suffer. Having come in to understand these things that have been taught now. The fact that you're listening to me right now, it means that you're on the path to freedom. The fact that you're listening to me right now, it means that you're on the path to self-realization. The fact that you're listening to me right now means that there's a way open up for you to set you free. The fact that you're listening to me right now and getting this message and receiving this message is vibrating with you, is resonating with you. And because you're ready. So if you are ready, there are certain steps you have to take. You have to be brave. You have to be strong. You have to be fearless. And you can only do this when you have that peace of mind. So it doesn't matter what you have and what you don't have, you still have a peace of mind. Because let me give you some, let me tell you something. When you start to manifest and start to create your reality consciously, these things, these material things that you would, would create, you don't look to them for happiness. They don't make you feel happy. I am telling you, they don't make you feel happy. You know why they don't make you feel happy? Because you're already happy. That's why my main mantra does always be every single day of my life. When I wake in the morning, I am happy. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am wise. In the night, I am happy. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I, I am happy. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am wise. And throughout the day, especially when I see saw the master numbers like 11, 11, Two 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 three 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 four 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 five 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 six 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 seven 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 eight 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 nine nine nine. You know there are people who are actually afraid of six six six. <laughs> They're afraid of their self, their higher self. So my yes, my brother, and my sisters, this whole message I'm bringing to you is to strengthen you. That's why I'm I'm taking it a bit long to strengthen you to bail you to encourage you to tell you do not bow to the system. Stand up. This is the time to stand up. Yes, you will face your fiery furnace. They will put you in the fire, fiery furnace. But all, when they put you in that fiery furnace, the fourth one would appear in the fire. The fourth one is your higher self, your conscious self. You come to that place of consciousness. That's why four represent consciousness. You see in 444 telling you consciousness is the only reality. Imagination is the only reality. Consciousness is the key. You are pure infinite consciousness. 
infinite awareness. That's who you are. You can't die. You can change dimension. You can transmute. Because this energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. And to create your world is learning to transmute energy. So your thoughts, they are vibrational frequencies. Because everything is energy, vibration, and frequency. So all you have to do is transmute your energy by, by reprogramming your subconscious mind. And to reprogram your subconscious mind, you have to realize everything you were taught from a little child, it was a damn lie. And because it was a lie, you have to reshape your thinking. That's why you're told, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So my brother and my sisters, I believe I've gotten the message across to you that I want to get across to you. And I really want to encourage you. I really, really want to strengthen you. I really want to build you in this time to be strong, okay? And to believe in yourself more than you have ever believed in yourself before. Because why? If you are not comfortable with something over your face, but because of your job, you're, you're putting this thing over your face, you'll never be at peace with yourself. You'll never be at peace with yourself. Seek to know what God wants you to do. God is your inner teacher, your intuition. In this time, you have to do what God wants you to do. What God wants you to do is to bring value to humanity. It's to discover Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Peace of mind, love, and light, wisdom. And that is why I'm bringing these three these three qualities and introduce them to you. I'm introducing Shedra, Misha, and Abednego to you, to, for you to be able to overcome your nephew, Kaneza, where Nebuchadnezzar would say, no, we know a true God, a true Savior, a true Redeemer, a true Helper, and we're going to believe in no other God but the God of Shedra, Meshach and Abednego, because Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego say, I would not believe in no God outside of myself. Because I know, Luke 17, 21 says that, don't let no man tell you, look here and look there, for the kingdom of God is within you. Don't let anyone have you to believe in any power outside of yourself. The kingdom of God is within you. And Matthew 6, 32 says, when you discover the kingdom of God within yourself, all these things will be added unto you. That's the secret there. All these things will be added unto you. You will know how to create your reality consciously. You will know how to live above Nebuchadnezzar, which is your ego, negative, intellectual self. The self that they build in you from since you were a little child. So my brother and my sisters, wake up. This time to wake up. This is the awakening time. And this crisis had to take place to, to get some of you to wake up. Okay? So with that being said, my brother and my sister, I really, really want to thank you very much for listening to me. And I want to say to you, if you are listening to me for the very, very first time, and what I'm saying, if it's making sense to you, it's resonating with you, it's really touching you deep within it. You're saying to yourself, what this man is saying is making sense to me. He's making me see the Bible from a different angle and have more understanding and appreciation for the Bible, knowing that it's all about my life, knowing it's wrapped up in secrets, in symbols, and they were hiding it from me all the time so that I would not empower myself. If you're saying that and you haven't subscribed already, I encourage you to subscribe, to like, to comment, and to share this video. But let me say this, this message I bring to you, as usual, I always remind you, it is the single eye, yes, 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 the single eye message of self-realization, of which Matthew 6, 22 says, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. Therefore, my brother and my sister, I'm saying to you, do not be afraid of the light. For when you have that experience of that light, that eye in you, which is that inner eye, will open up in you after you would have experienced the mighty shaking, the great earthquake. And when you awake within yourself, you will hear the unearthly wind. And when you hear the unearthly wind, you will ascend as a fire be in, and you will roll the stone away and come out of the tomb and leave the tomb empty and understand the crucifixion, death, burial, resurrection, the birth, all these things. And I'm putting that book together for you called The Secret Vagina, because there's a secret portal 
love that he hid from you. Okay? And when you have that experience, you come to realize why I always give you the symbol of the single eye. Put in my hand right here. Because you go beyond here. Beyond the skull. Okay? And you come to under. And that's why when you see the pyramid, you see the eye above the pyramid. My brother might say, it's not an evil sign as you have it to believe. It is the all-seeing eye of God in you. Who is your imagination, the creator in man? For you will have an awakened imagination. And whatever you can imagine, you can create. That's why if someone asks me to use my imagination on their behalf, because they really believe in what I am saying, I'll do it for them and use my imagination on their behalf. Therefore, my brother and my sisters, as I always give you this symbol of the single eye, I always say to you, when you have the experience, you come to realize that it is the rising of the S. U N in a S O N and everything that the sun shines upon it brings forth in abundance and the sun is the light of the world and without the sun there's no life and there's no light and without the human imagination there's no anything made that was made therefore the sun parallels the human imagination the human imagination parallels the sun and the sun is what powers all of humanity that is why the bible tells you in psalms 84 11 that the lord thy god is a sun and a shield and no good thing with he withhold from you it also states in Malachi 4 and 2 that the sun as in the SU and of righteousness shall arise in you with healing in his wings. And common sense will teach you that no S-O-N could ever exist unless there first be the S-U-N. So there's no way there can be a man 2,000 years ago named Jesus who's a S-O-N who is known as the light of the world. Get rid of that idol out of your mind. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, my encouragement to you is to always use your mind power which is your god power your sun power your solar power your creative power to achieve your every desire so with that being said i want to say peace love you all i'm out